Now, as we look ahead to the 2023 medium-term budget policy statement this week, some economists say Finance Minister Inokorongwana must focus on, among others, measures to stimulate economic growth, fix crumbling infrastructure, among others. Now, the MTBPS says it's become known is looking to address the needs of the citizens as well as look to the spending adjustments, among other issues. So let's speak now to Efficient Group Director Davi Roth, who joins us live to discuss this. Davi, thank you so much for your time this evening. Firstly, let's start with your expectations ahead of Wednesday. Well, a couple of things. I think the context is important to start off with, and the context is that the fiscal accounts are in very deep trouble. The debt levels have reached record high levels, and the, first, and the, the, the state just keeps on borrowing. Revenue is under tremendous pressure for various reasons. Uh, so the Minister of Finance is not collecting as much tax as they previously thought. And on the expenditure side, there's also more spending happening than what the Minister of Finance originally planned in the, in the budget in the February month. And in the meantime, the South African economy is really doing quite badly. So what can we expect it under these kind of circumstances? I think what we have to keep in mind that there is an election around the corner and politicians do not want to make unpopular decisions before an election. So I don't think the Minister of Finance will cut back on spending significantly. There will be some spending cuts here and there, but nothing important. And I do not think the Minister of Finance will make any announcements for increasing taxes. This is anyway not usually the platform to do that, uh, although there was talk of a possibility of a tax increase. But I don't think the Minister of Finance will do that either. So the only option left to the Minister of Finance is basically to borrow more money and getting us even into deeper trouble than what we are already in. So no, no big shakes can be expected, but I would be interested in seeing what the minister expect in terms of economic growth and some of his other numbers, like for example, the deficit and debt, level and, uh, debt num numbers and the like. And I'm going to get to, to the taxes in just a moment, but I want to, uh, you know, stay with something that you've said, because, um, you know, this particular borrowing has been a concern as well for some economists, because they say that, you know, right now to service the debt, it looks like we're still paying the interest, which also sinks us further and further. And it's also important for some of these agreements to be made public so we know what we're getting ourselves into. Yeah, it's called a debt spiral or a fiscal cliff. Uh, where if you keep on borrowing money, uh, then your debt goes up. The debt, the current outstanding debt of the state is 4,500 billion rand. It is close to 75% of GDP. And that's roughly about 80,000 rand for each one of us in South Africa. That's a per capita de debt. Uh, of uh, the state debt in South Africa. We can't keep on borrowing like this. Uh, and not only are we borrowing a lot of money, the money, we spend this money on some capital expenditure, but we spend this money on current expenditure as well. It's like borrowing money on your mortgage and go and buy groceries with that. That is very, very irresponsible. And I can tell you, if we continue in this trajectory, we are going to get into trouble and we are heading for some sort of financial crisis. Uh, in the meantime, what's been happening is that foreigners have been selling our debt and the local funders have been picking up some of this debt, like, for example, the banks, so much so that the South African Reserve Bank is even getting concerned about the banks that keeps on funding a bigger, bigger chunk of the state's uh, fiscal requirements at the moment. So, yes, uh, we have to understand that the reality is, is that there is, there's a financial limit. Uh, to what the Minister of Finance can do, and we are very, very fast approaching that limit to how much the Minister of Finance can spend. And I know you talk about taxes and listening to some economists like yourselves who are saying that they don't believe that this will be the platform to increase them, but we saw reports suggesting that VAT may be um, increased, but of course this, these were just reports. But it's also looking to the fact that this is to try and uh, you know continue the 350 rand relief of distress yeah. grant now. If the taxes are not increased for this particular grant to continue, how then do they begin to have this conversation to increase that? Because it doesn't look like it's going, it's going away, is it? Yeah, well, it's too late to increase taxes. The, the, the so-called COVID grant, uh, you need approximately 40 billion rand to fund the COVID grant for one year. If you increase value-added taxes for a full financial year, you will perhaps collect about 25, 30 billion rand for one percentage increase. There was talk of two percentage increases. That means we can theoretically collect, say, 50 or perhaps even 60 billion rand in a full financial year. Mm -hmm. We don't have a full financial year left. We only got, in, in the practical terms, if they make the increase now, uh, we will only have about five months left or even less. 
Uh, so that's certainly not going to be sufficient to cover that specific expense item. And if the Minister of Finance decides to increase taxes now, then we get to the budget next year in February. Uh, and what's what's going to happen then? Is he going to maintain or keep that the tax increase? Is he going to do something to the COVID grant? What's he going to do? The, the, the point is, is that we've painted ourselves into a corner here. And the only real alternative for the Minister of Finance is to start cutting back on state spending. Uh, and, and I'm afraid politically that it's extremely difficult to do. In the meantime, there are a lot of academics and uh, economists left-leaning, I must add, that suggest that the Minister of Finance must keep on spending uh, because somehow there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, it seems. But the, but, but we are going to get into financial trouble and we have to t- take very difficult political decisions now and that is to start cutting back on state spending, even though it's going to cost you in the, in the Uh, in the elections, which is probably going to happen sometime, perhaps around about March next year. And all of this is happening against the backdrop of South Africans who are struggling with rising costs of living, who are struggling with the high cost of fuel, who are struggling with so much already. And and you think about how, uh, you know, our our baskets are shrinking. But Davi, I'm told that's all we have time for. I hope we'll speak again. Just post the, you know, the medium term budget policy statement and see what exactly is happening and what does the future look like? Let me thank you for your time. That is Efficient Group Director Davi Roth.